inspiration comes from the Prophet and what he exactly. went through all his life. And then he says, Subhanallah. Then he says at the end, he says the last line of this poem is so powerful as well, and it helps as as a community. Hazar taqat ho, so dalil ho, phir bhi lehje mein aajzi se. Hazar taqat ho, so dalil ho, phir bhi lehje mein aajzi se. Adab ki lazat, dua ki khushbu, basa ke rakna, kamal ye hai. He says you have all the strength. You have thousands of proofs. Like in a debate or argument, you're talking, you're trying to get on somebody. You know, you have all the strength, you have all the evidence, but in spite of that, you have politeness in the tone that you're speaking in. Like the tone, like today, like the tone of the ummah is so messed up. Like most of our differences is not because we have a disagreement on something. Most of our problems is because the tone in which we speak to each other. Exactly. So you have all, you have all this evidence and you have all this stuff. And like you know that waiter likuli humus at the lomas at homos like you know maybe it's not even like de uh, demeaning being demeaning and looking down upon someone but through your words but it's just like the way you do the, like all that different stuff you're doing and like the other person feels inferior pride is not just making yourself making put it convincing yourself you're better than somebody pride is also putting someone down because and naturally when you put someone down you're putting yourself up right so like alisa said in front of your face what does that mean no, hazar taqatu. You have all the power. You have all the proofs. You have all the evidence, but you're still gentle. You're still polite in the way you speak. Adab ki lazat. You, you, instead of feeling the sweetness and the flavor of putting someone down, you're actually feeling the sweetness of holding back your anger, holding your anger, holding back words. That how also sweet, has a, how sweet is that? How that's also that? sweet. Yeah, it is. Like, sweet. So you know, when's the last time, like, you, a lot of times when someone speaks back to somebody, like, oh, I, I'm so glad I spoke up for myself and I defended myself. It's that That's also necessary. But sometimes it's sweet just to like, ignore the, the... It's really, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's it. difficult, but it's sweet. That's, that's, that's the whole point, right? Like, there's a sweetness to it. Like, when you, when you could you do know, something... You're so good at it. Because, not now, I, now I can't say much to you because, you know, you're Mufti Azam Kabir. But like, but before when I used to criticize you, you would stay quiet, especially when Abdurrahim Rahmatullah was around. When I would say something, you would just listen. And I would, and me, I would feel bitter about it after. I feel horrible. Like, man, I think I overspoke. I over, I trespassed my boundaries as an older brother. And on the other hand, you were just smiling. And, and sometimes you could just, you could just, you know, you would be nicer than anyone in the room. And you you swallowed it with a with a sweet smile, and I later on felt guilty about it. And that's in the nature of akhlaq. If we can just humble ourselves and listen to people, it's a powerful feeling. Basically, like you know, he says that that he's as adab ki lazat dua ki khushbu. You know, the fact that you just it's, it's one and one element. You're like being respectful and forgiving, but then even even harder than that, but more rewarding than that. Is going back in your room and making dua for the person who insulted you. Like it's that's another level. Like there's another level. Like how the Prophet like appreciate the Prophet Allah Mahdi Qawmi Fa'inam La Alamun. Like in Uhud, they're throwing rocks at him and he's facing defeat. And Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, just make dua against these people. Make dua against these people. Uswak dua ki khushbu. Like at that point, he just the frag the smell, the beautiful fragrance. Abdu'a omitted from his beautiful mouth and the words that he said, Oh Allah, guide these people. They wow. just don't know any better. They just don't know. Imagine like you start doing that. They just don't know any better. And so but I mentioned this entire poem from there's so many things we can take from it, but I mentioned it specifically for the idea of like how the Prophet was so comforting, even though he was going through difficulty, right? Now the second element of that is after our brother, you know, it's been one year. And in one year, you can think about a lot of different scenarios in which you know you there's you have the grief when someone passes away you have grief you have pain but then there's also people that have a lot of regrets and the regret part is usually more painful than the grief of the loss it's so painful when you talk to people who have regrets man i this would happen i did this and we just had a fight and this happened but then I would safely say that because of the Kamal of our brother, he was such a humble, always listening, 
you know, he was the one that was the water for the fire. You know, he was so nice. And then, of course, the kamal of our parents that worked so hard on us. And then, of course, the excellence of deen, not dunya, not education, deen that taught us so much better. That after a year, you know, the pain of regret of, you know, mistreating him or him mistreating us. But Jan, can you say this? Like, I was thinking the other day, on the 6th of October, I was looking at his notebooks. And I realized, I had this awakening that I actually taught him so much. I was his teacher. So I taught him for, I taught him Arabic, grammar, like all the pursuits in Miftah and Madrasa. I taught him for so many years, four or five years. Like, we, not just a brother, I was his teacher. And then I was his older brother, right? And then I was his mentor. But in all these years, Wallahi, I could safely say that he never hurt my feelings once. He never actually spoke back to me once. Like, I was thinking about the only time, only time we ever had a, like, you know, a quarrel or you know, loud tone back and forth was when we used to play sports. And that's allowed. You're competitive. Basketball, tennis, you know, yeah, ooh, like that. And, you know, that's the beauty of sports. Like, it comes out of you. You know, everyone who watches us, we're competitive. But he was, imagine when we die, people can say that about us. Like, this person, I did so much to him. I insulted him. Like, when Hassan bin Ali, radiallahu anhu, passed away and he was being buried in Baqiyah. Marwan was there for his funeral and Hussein one who was standing next to Marwan and Marwan bin Hakam was this like really you know his tongue was really filthy he was so harsh and he used to say some real bad things about Ahl Bayt especially about Hassan and Hussein Wanhuma, in front of them they never once retaliated Hussein was a younger brother, so he used to always look at Hassan Anhu and he was always so calm as a cucumber, never say anything, always forgiving, this, that. And everyone knew that Marwan doesn't like him. But when he passed away, Marwan was crying on his next to his grave, literally tearing, bawling. So Hussein Anhu looks at Marwan and says to him, Why are you crying for? Like you never liked this man. And he you know he said, I'm crying because the world will never see. Such a tolerant person ever again. Oh he God. could carry more burden than the Mount of Uhud could carry. This man, this man who we just buried, had the ability to carry more burden than that. I'm just crying because of the world, like I've never seen a more tolerant person, and I feel bad that the world will never see such a tolerant person oh again. My God. Like even your enemies buckle when wow. you pass away. That's greatness. That's command. <laughs> Exactly. That's greatness, man. You know, like they can't, no one should be able to you know, criticize or come at you, for what you when it comes to your character. So when I look at my brother, you know, I was thinking about that and thinking about that. Then I also thought about, and we'll conclude with this, Bajan, how many parents are there in the world right now that could safely say that every single time I call this person to do something, he said, Labik, my son was always there for me. My son's entire life was there de dedicated for me. My son was like this. My, like, I look at Amin Abuji, and I, but then, you know, I would say this you and me don't, will not have the same honor because our brother, he wasn't married. He had no other commitments. He was literally like the son and daughter. We have no sisters. The son and daughter for our mother and father. And we, we got to know how much he did for Amiji. After he left this world, because all of us collectively can't do that much. All of us collectively. We cannot, we still need help. Like we're still getting our students to do things. Someone picking up the medicine, someone doing this, someone doing that. He did it himself, right? And so after a year, man, like I'm thinking that the, the only reward he could have received for his excellence was Jannah. And he is... Truly, truly, his death is an enviable thing. You know, it truly is. Because at the end of the day, Bajan, at the end of the day, all that matters in life is not how you, you know, started your life off and what you did throughout your life and what you earned throughout your life. All that matters is what you did in that final moment. Like, you, everyone will go through that. Not everyone goes to the moment of seeing the Kaaba. Because not everyone goes to the Kaaba. Not everyone has the can, can go through the moment 
of you know of going to med school and feeling happy about it or all these different moments that people have not everyone has that ability but every single one of us will go through the moment you know people say like what's the best moment in your life the day i saw my son like the day he was born but not everybody goes to that moment 